Hey everybody, it's Naya. Welcome back to Naya Reads and Smiles. Hey everybody, so today I have a more casual, I'm gonna, I kind of want to title this like a reading vlog even though it's just gonna span over one day, probably only like two hours. <laughs> I know it's been so long since I've done any sort of reading vlogs or just kind of like sit down, chit chatty, let's just talk books, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I really miss it and I miss you guys and we need to catch up because some news has dropped since the last time we talked. To just update you guys on what I've been reading, I've been having not the best reading month, but that's just mainly because I've been so busy. I haven't had time to actually like, like read how I like to read, which we'll get into in a minute. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I organized these top two shelves, which I don't even remember. When was the last organizational video? I think it was like, what, like two months ago? But yeah, I organized these two shelves um, and I didn't film it, sadly. It was kind of like a 3 a.m. spur of the moment thing. I could have filmed it, but it would have just been like real crazy. I also kind of wanted to give you guys a little tour of these two uh, bookshelves because I completely took off all the books that were on there and replaced them with books that I've read. My goal is to kind of like get all these top tiers of bookshelves just full of my favorite books. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get more organized come 2020. So we're starting now. If you guys remember a few months back earlier this year, um, booktube started or the pilot of booktube came out, which is this new show, uh, a YouTube original show. YouTube reached out to me and was like, hey, would you like to come and film some episodes of booktube? And I was just like, so yeah, in that vlog where I was like, I'm working on a secret thing and I can't say what it is, that was that secret thing. Um, the very first episode was with Malcolm Gladwell and oh my god, you guys, I just checked this morning and it's almost at a million views and I'm like flipping out. I feel so honored to have been a part of it and everyone there, like from the team to the person that like was picking us up at the airport, like everyone involved in the booktube show is so passionate about books and like I can't even describe how life-changing um, this whole experience has been I, I feel like I should just make a dedicated video my like these past three months since August was when we filmed the first episode um, have been crazy we filmed one episode in LA and the other episode in New York oh yeah so there's another episode coming out soon I can't say what it is but I'm in two episodes of the four that are coming out it's just been such a life-changing experience and I've been traveling a lot and um, I also have a full-time job which is why you guys like my videos have been kind of sporadic so I apologize about that but yeah like the whole experience is just totally life-changing and I'm not gonna cry it's been incredible and I'm so happy so many of you guys love the Malcolm Gladwell episode. If you guys saw the previous video that just went up was a little segment of that full episode. So if you want to check it out, I'll put it in the description. This next episode I'm even more excited about because the author I got to spoke to, like literally speaking to him changed my life. And you guys will hopefully see that in the video. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's a little update on booktube. I'm just like still on like a high, like I can't believe it happened. And there's gonna be more episodes coming out in 2020. And it's just, yeah, I, I just really hope the show does well. And thank you for everyone who's just supported me and is watching it. And it just, it like, I can't even describe like how much it means that they reached out to me. And then that also you guys um, are really enjoying the episodes. Anyways, okay, okay, enough with the emotions. Time to get into the books. What have I been reading this sad month of non-reading? If you guys remember, last month I read The Diviners by Libba Bray and it was incredible. This is like, if I could describe what I love in a book, it would just be, I would just say, oh, The Diviners. It has every single thing. Reading The Diviners was the best decision ever. This book was fantastic. For anyone who doesn't know, it takes place in the 1920s. Um, it 100% feels like you are in that era when you're reading the book. I said previously that I recommend listening to the audiobook um, because the amazingly talented voice actor does a 1920s American accent so perfect. In the acknowledgments of this book, Libba Bray talks about how much research, how many libraries she went into, how many, just how much research went into learning about things that were going on in the 1920 er the 1920s era and how people talked. And there's so much fiction in this book, even though it's nonfiction, it's historical, there's ghosts and mystical magic and all this kind of stuff. But like the foundation of it is rooted in actual history. And you feel that throughout the entire 
book you just feel like you're in the 1920s it's it's so beautiful and perfect in the diviners we're following a bunch of different characters who are all diviners or who have some sort of power our main character evie she has the power to hold an object and like tell something like a secret about the owner like she can um see pictures in her head related to that object and like the last sort of situation the person was in when they had that object with them so the diviners was fantastic and i'm currently on the second book lair of dreams and i the diviners was a 10 out of 10 book for me and i was so scared going into the second book thinking it wasn't gonna like live up to how amazing the first book is but Libba Bray does not disappoint. The second book is even better than the first book because I, I think I said this in my wrap up video for, with the diviners is that the diviners it's it takes you at least about like 100 150 pages to get into the book. It's like a 500 page book by the way. Um, I think this one's 500 pages too but it takes you a bit of time to get into the book because she really spends the first half of the book just letting you get to know these characters and the book is so incredibly character driven. Not much happens until about the halfway point but the characters are so interesting that you just keep reading for the characters despite like whatever's happening with the plot line by the end of the diviners i was fully invested in every single character i'm like i will die for these characters i will fight for these characters i will like you can how much money do you need i'm sending it to you like i just i would do anything for these characters now going into layer of dreams i'm still writing that like high of like i love these characters i've invested in these characters and so we don't have all that like character building going on we're just jumping straight into the plot of this one so it's a lot more fast paced and just even more like like we already love the characters so now it's just a matter of figuring out this whole plot evil situation going on also halfway through a blade so black by ll mckinney for this book is a alice in wonderland retelling story so in this book alice is black and she's from atlanta she's a city girl basically in this book there is this place called wonderland just like in alice in wonderland um but in this version wonder Wonderland is home to a lot of like dark monster creatures and sometimes these creatures can come into the real world um, in which case there are sort of protectors that either kill the, that kill the creature before they come into this world so they go into Wonderland and kill them um, or they get the creatures once they've come into this reality. Following our main character who one night she is running away from a situation I'm not gonna say what but she ends up stumbling upon um, this boy who is killing a monster monster and she can see him so kind of like a shadow hunters thing but not really anyways his name is Hatta just like the mad hatter he kind of trains her and teaches her how to fight these monsters several times a week they go into wonderland together and slay these monsters until one night something happens and she ends up having to venture deeper into wonderland than she normally goes in order to save a person um anyway that's all i want to say but this book is fantastic it is so fast paced you jump into the book and already she's like fighting monsters doing all sorts of stuff able to get halfway through the book in a matter of a day so I, my goal is to actually finish this book tonight lastly i'm currently reading reveal me i don't know the shattered me series is coming to an end my favorite series of all time there's one more book left and to head him off he released this little novella bind up to get us through before the last book comes out i already read shadow me which i went back to reread because it's from Kenji's perspective and I love Kenji so I'll read anything that he's in. I'm currently reading Reveal Me and I'm halfway through if you guys can see I'm almost done with this and it is so good. So for anyone who doesn't know this novella both of the novellas follow our main character Kenji. He's the perspective we're reading from. He is my favorite character. Like I'm so happy Tehera Mafi has decided to focus so much attention on him because I just feel like he's neglected. You know he's kind of just like the fun person that's keeping everything together but we never actually know what's going on in his head and this last book in the Shatter Me series Defy Me we really got so much Kenji and I love it and now we get this little novella that's just entirely him um, and it is beautiful and amazing and hilarious because it's Kenji. Uh, these are all the books that I'm currently reading. My goal is to finish them before the end of the month. I haven't read much this month and I'm thinking of also starting an audiobook but I don't know what audiobook I want to read you guys. Please leave me recommendations down below because the last, what was the last audiobook I listened to? I don't even remember. Um, I'm so behind you guys. I'm so behind. But okay, let's get to this bookshelf because I want to show you what I did. I want to show you what I did because it's like, it's beautiful and we just, I just, I just need you guys to know that I do organize some 
times. I'm just, I'm so proud of myself. It was a 3 a.m. decision. It was probably like the best 3 a.m. decision I ever made. So let's, let's look at this. Oh, I don't even think I showed you guys. I got this little um, gray basket thing to basically kind of just hold books that I want to read. And it's kind of just a mess right now. War Girls is the next book that I plan on reading. Hopefully if I can finish those ones. Yeah, okay, so this is the shelf. Look how beautiful, look how, I don't think it's ever been this organized since it existed when I bought it from Walmart. <laughs> my goal was to kind of put all of my favorite red books just kind of all on here so they're all in one place. So whatever I'm referencing them in the videos or anything like that, I can just easily pull them off. So a lot of these books came from that ugly shelf down there. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. It has a bunch of stuff on it. So of course, the first book here is Circe. Um, I'm going to put the Song of Achilles next to this as soon as I read it. That's also on my TBR list, if you guys remember from my, my previous video. We have Circe, Her Every Fear by Peter Swanson. Amazing, amazing thriller book. Highly recommend. Another thriller book, Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. Um, also would highly recommend. Basically, every book I'm going to be talking about real quick. Um, Highly recommend. <laughs> Nevernight Books and Serpent and Dove, Vicious. Oh, okay, so this is kind of like my entire Victoria Schwab section. I just put all of her books up here. I still have to read The Near Witch, which is, where is The Near Witch? Oh, there it is, okay. It's on my little TBR cart over here. Okay, I don't wanna call this a TBR cart because it has a bunch of stuff that isn't like a TBR book. I just kind of like put a bunch of, it's a, it's a mess. We're organizing this next, don't worry. We'll do that in another video. But um, this is The Near Witch. This is the only book that I have by Victoria Schwab that's not on that shelf up there. And then I have my new favorite author, Nick Stone. Jackpot is right here. I have Children of Blood and Bone, Carry On, which I still need to read, Wayward Son. Please no spoilers, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This shelf is the one I'm most proud of. So basically, this is almost entirely paperback books. Um, a lot of this is my, the few YA contemporaries that I actually really like. Um, so yeah, so we have Outlander here, which I do plan on continuing the series one day. <laughs> which is why I matched my nails. Not really, but we're just gonna go with it, okay? I have my Angie Thomas books, and I also have a DVD of The Hate You Give, um, which is technically not a book, but I'm just gonna keep it there anyways. And then I have my book from the Malcolm Gladwell booktube episode, Talking to Strangers. I read Talking to Strangers back in August, but I wasn't able to talk about it because um, I, they just told me not to talk about it until the episode came out, so I will be talking about Malcolm Gladwell's book. And then I have There's Someone Inside Your House by Steph Stephanie Perkins, amazing, amazing thriller. Eventually, I wanna put all my favorite thrillers on one shelf. And girl, I have Sleeping Giants, another amazing sci-fi book. Um, Turtles All the Way Down, Rebel of the Sands, which I need to continue this series. All of these paperbacks here. Um, this one I DNF'd, but I'm just putting it next to this so that it's with like the same author. But The Hating Game was amazing, 99% mine was not the hating game. <laughs> I have Flame in the Mist, Creed, Not a Drop to Drink, Frankly in Love by David Yoon, The Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. Um, and then I have my little poetry collection over here. Um, I have Not a Drop to Drink. Um, I have all of Amanda Lovelace's books and then some other poetry graphic novel stuff over here. This is the last shelf I organized. This is the newest one. All of these books were up on that other black shelf over there. But I gave a 10 out of 10 stars to all of these books so I felt like they needed to like be front and center instead of like hiding over there in a corner. Ember in the Ashes series by Sabah Tahir, amazing of course. And then I have Illuminae which oh, maybe I should put this on the top shelf with Jay Kristoff's other, no it's fine we'll keep it there. And then I have the Fifth Wave series which is totally out of order but we don't believe in order here on my channel. I wanted the hardbacks to be next to each other so you know, you know organization. Then I have the Pledge series by Kimberly Durding, one of the most underrated series of all times. It's amazing. Even Adam, another underrated book. The Forest of Hands and Teeth, my favorite zombie series of all times. I love this more than The Walking Dead and I really love The Walking Dead. We Were Liars and then I have Nicola Yoon's books. I have All the Bright Places, Top 10, and I'll Give You the Sun by Danny Nelson. Oh, and I also have Caraval up here, but um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of just hiding. Okay, so those are all the books that I moved from that shelf, which we're gonna tackle that one someday. But 
not today. Thank you guys so much for watching this little update. My next video is going to be an unboxing because I don't know if you can tell, but I have a whole stack of books down there, which we'll get to soon. Until next time, keep reading, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!